Very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's ULA webinar. Uh, today's topic and the webinar topic for today is analytics and insights. Now, today's webinar has not been accredited for any CPD credits, just making sure that uh, that's clear out of the table. Uh, but it is going to be one of those sessions where I get to demonstrate the product. Um, certainly an opportunity for current users and anyone who is interested in how a set of data and the analytics and the insights that a legal firm should be looking at so that they can make better business decisions, uh, this would certainly be a, a webinar that you should be interested in. Uh, of course, I'm going to be using ULaw Practice as the platform of choice to demonstrate the capabilities, but very subliminally, what we're hoping that you would take away is looking at the types of data sets that you should be consuming or looking to appreciate review within your own legal firm so that you can, of course, make better business decisions. You can be more aware of how information is working to your advantage, staying on top of critical numbers, whether that's your revenue, your expense, or granular pieces of information such as how much of pro bono hours are you spending or giving away on a time period. So that's going to be part and parcel of today's webinar is the analytics and insights. And like every other ULA webinar, of course today's webinar has that specific agenda, is to give you a slightly different perspective of the tool sets that you have within the ULA platform that represents data in a slightly different format. Okay, so every day as users continue to use the ULA product, um, we continue to consume data as you enter them. We continue to store the data as you enter them. And now when it's our turn to do our little bit to help you out, there's two varied representations that we use to give you the data back. And the data is now computed based on what's stored, the formulas and the computation goes behind the scene. And primarily there's two major aspects to how we represent that data. In a couple of weeks back, I think we did a webinar on reporting and how that's very important, of course, from a certain type of appreciation or consumption of data. So one of the representative aspects of the ULA platform is providing the reports as a form of reporting the data, right? So this is, these are traditional, could be CSV Excel sheets, this could be PDF documents, mostly compliance in nature, where it's needed in a specific format, and it is, of course, required in a specific standardized template. It's still the same data that's running your legal firm. But then the second representation, as we evolve the product, as we evolve the different levels with which we provide you the input data aspects, right? So today you have webinar, um, you have your ULaw product on a web platform. We've now grown to a mobile platform where you have this at your fingertips on your phones by just downloading the ULaw app. Now we started to evolve the idea of how do we provide you data both on the web platform as well as on the mobile platform that's faster and easier to consume and it does not have to be the standard reporting format that are often needed for compliance matters. So if you're a business owner and if you're looking to get a quick snapshot of how profitable am I this month? You don't have to necessarily run reports to know that. You should be able to just click on a button and be able to get that answer. That's the second layer of representation that we're looking through today, which is the analytics and insights, as we call them, within the ULA platform. A combination, of course, of the reports and the visually more appealing analytics dashboards, if you will, gives you that double whammy effect of being able to consume your own legal firm's business information in two different total standard sets 
in fact, it could be in two different devices. Because if you're using a mobile phone, you really don't want to scan through a PDF document. It might just be faster to look at visually appealing graphics. And today we're going to, of course, focus on the visually appealing graphics section of it. Okay, so really analyzing the unknown. So sometimes the compliance documents are pretty straightforward. Okay, you have ledgers, journals, you pretty much know the questions that an auditor or the expectations from a law society is going to be ahead of time. You know that they're expecting the ledgers, journals, you know that the expectation is that you do a reconciliation on a monthly basis, you know the expectation is to have your financial books as part of the bookkeeping compliance in order, right? When it comes to business data, which is really not bound by such compliance, then you're pretty much sometimes, you don't really know the questions or don't know the answers because you don't know the questions. And as part of the insights, as we build this product and as we build these feature sets, we're hoping to give you not only the answers, but also kind of give you some of the questions that you probably didn't think of asking yourself. Right, so that is really what we think is the, no, you know, the whole analyze the unknown. And there's three major areas that we focus on in getting your data. One is really at the client or the contact level. So really understanding at a client level, the types of information such as how soon, what's the dates of sale for this client? Does this client pay you well on time or not? So if the next opportunity comes with that client, you can make an informed decision whether it makes sense to work with that client. We then give you data or insights around your matters, your files. So where, in which matters do you make most revenue? Which matters gives you the most expenses? A little bit more granular on the matter. How many open files do you have? How many matters do you open in a specific month? Um, again, reiterating that today's webinar is not accredited for any CPD credits. Um, just right to reiterate, I think that was a quick question. And the third aspect from client to matter, and the third, of course, is accounting, but looking at more from a business financial aspect of it. Right, so this is really your revenue, your expenses, the categories of revenue and expenses, the pro bono charts by clients, how many unbilled hours do you have in a month, what are the lost opportunities to make revenue, those are the types of questions that we're looking for you to get answers out of. And we firmly believe that empowering you with this insight is going to equip you, really that's the word I was looking for, equip you with the right tools that allow you to make informed decisions. So if you recognize that you're spending a lot of money on a specific rental property, then maybe at the right time, it gives you the trigger point to be able to renegotiate the rent or otherwise. If you're spending a lot of money on, let's say, a specific website provider that you're dealing with and you've if you've entered that into the ULAW system, we're now able to tell you that if I were to compare over the last six months, these are the top areas where you're spending a lot of money. What you do with that data and what you do with that insight, of course, is very personal to each and every individual and the individual's perspective and situation, right? But our role is to be able to present to you that information in easy, Biteable, consumable format. And the reason for providing now this data in this biteable sizes are twofold. One is that you're a sole practitioner or a good majority of our clients are sole practitioners or are growing legal firms, maybe one to 10. And time is of the essence. And if you are looking to have quick information available at your fingertips, we now have to evolve to make that available. The next reason, of course, is the evolution of technology around even legal tech. 
as consumers, we're starting to use the mobile phones more often than not to be able to access the internet and do all that work that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And your legal work is no exception, and it's only going to be a matter of time before that aspect comes into your mobile use. So we're starting to prepare for now and the future of you being able to do more work on a mobile device um, as appropriate, right? So analytics seem very appropriate to be able to give you that uh, at your fingertips. And as I mentioned earlier, our insights, what does that do? It takes the client matter and the accounting data, looks at it at a holistic level and provides you information to give you your different perspectives, allows you to get answers for even questions that you didn't know. And instead of the, I guess, the mundane, boring PDF template or the tabular form that we're all used to, we now help you visualize it in a bar graph, a pie chart. And also, very importantly, almost like a AI format, or almost like a Q&A. So it's basically asking you all and us giving you the answers to that, right? So this is really the construct of the insights platform within you all, and it's only going to evolve as you walk you through the demonstration today. We looked at this from a reporting standpoint too, predominantly for, once again, compliance related aspects of your business. But here are some good examples of where you could possibly use the access to data on your mobile app for consumption, where the insights and analytics help, really understanding your revenue insight. So click on a button, how much of revenue did I make this month, this week? today, if I wanted to understand my expense book by client real quick, if I wanted to compare my revenue between time periods, so what was my revenue this month compared to what was it same time last year? If you're looking to learn if there is a certain pattern to your revenue based on, of course, the silo of practice that you practice with, uh, sometimes they talk about how often you have a lot of accidents happening during the winter season. Um, of course, post-COVID, right now, the situation that we're in, things can be a bit skewed. But once we do get back to the new norm, you're starting to now discover the same set of trends, right? So being able to compare revenue, being able to compare your expenses, your P&L, gives you that time-based perspective of how your firm has been performing and as you see improvements in that performance, that's only going to motivate you to learn the reasons behind that and apply it moving forward. One of the most used dashboard or analytical items that we're starting to see today is the, the drawing by investors. How much of capital money have I put into this business so far? Who are the different investors that have invested into this firm? If it's not a sole practitioner firm, how much of money have I drawn out of that initial investment I've made, so on and so forth. Those are very critical, and sometimes the information is not right on your face and straightforward if you're looking to draw that out of PDF documents. And that's pretty much all I'm going to be talking about what's to come, and that's dive deep really into showing you those capabilities. So I'm once again utilizing my EULA platform. I'm logged in, of course, as uh, my favorite Roger Moore, the legal practitioner. If you look at the EULA platform, and someone who's been using this for a while or someone who's just looking to explore the use of it, we pretty much divided the major components of your legal practice into clients or contacts, matters, and accounts. And of course, there are now additional screens that you see on the left-hand side that support, complement, or supplement those three major capabilities. Right. So if you look at the quick view, it's nothing but 
a quicker, faster representation of all of your matters. You can look at the same matters right under here as well, but it's not visually appealing. If you really wanted to search up a matter, let's say you know that this is a WSIB file, and if you wanted to quickly search up that matter, there it is, right? And clicking on it takes you into the matter. So just a little appreciation for how this is built. The calendar, of course, is managing your time capabilities, and we had looked at how you can generate reports pretty much from every screen, if you will, because you have a separate section for reports. You have a separate section for compliance. These are, of course, all PDF documents. So anything compliance related, you notice these are documents that you download. This is a certain template that is expected. Now what we're going to try and drill down into are using that same data, the analytics. Now, if you look at the EULA platform, we have the web version. We have our mobile app as well. And provided we have the time, and I hope we do for that, I'm going to try and walk you through that as well. One of the last menu options that I want to draw your attention to is the analytics menu option itself. You can see I was doing a previous demo and I have some data in it. But let me just set all of this to none to begin with. For those who are not using this feature, hopefully this motivates you to please start playing around with it because it can give you some hard facts in some fun ways. You can configure the whole analytics section right under our settings that you see in the top. Out of here. There you go. So, right here in the dashboard, you can pretty much set up how many analytical items that you need in the analytics menu options. So, you could say, I need five, I just need two. You can configure this the way you prefer. So, let's say I'm going for six. Now, what happens? When I go back into my analytics, now I have six widgets or analytical dashboard items that I can individually review, and I can use them for various purposes. So let me give you an example of it. If I want to understand the top six aspects of it, I want to understand my revenue. I'm going to do this for this quarter. I want to understand the expenses for this quarter, just numbers. And I want to understand my P&L for this quarter. You're not generating any report for this. You could if you wanted to. And let me pause this. And you can pause these running numbers at any time. You can do the same things by running reports in your accounting calendar, many options. You can come in here and you can say, give me my revenue, go into detail, and then say quarterly. It's the same data, but the representation is different. So you need to now open the PDF, and there you go. You have 1,000, 2,046, 391. That's the same information that you have here in the analytics. 2,046 being the highest revenue, $1,000 being the second highest, 391. So this representation of data has been made easily consumable to you in this format. Now, imagine the power of having the same level of insight on your phone. So you don't even have to log into your web platform if you will. For data and insights and analytics such as these, you can review them right from your phone, and I'll show that to you later as we close up the webinar. So this is, again, kind of giving you an apples to apples or apples to orange comparison, the underlying data remaining to be the same, right? The same thing with everything else. I don't want to overkill this concept. If I went into my expense and did that, 
and then for the quarter, again, you, you get the idea, you get it in a PDF format, the 100, 200, and the 600 being the top three, the total expenses being 900, and it's exactly what we see here. 900, 600, 200, and 100 being the top three. And if you really wanted to see your P&L, you can go in here, and you can do your P&L here. I'm gonna stop boring you with this example with this. All right, so you, of course, with this report, it gives you a combination of both the data sets of revenue and expenses and tells you the profitability. That's exactly what this is telling you too. It's telling you a combination of all of that. So let's say this is not enough. You want to deeper dive into the p l you can click on the details and this is where it opens up the kind of q a format that if you want to really give it a quick glance you can start to appreciate it so are we operating on p l the answer is yes it's profitable total profit it's almost a question and an answer format now each analytical item may differ in the amount of Q&A that we're able to produce. For example, in this, we've been able to give you about 10 items. I'll pick and choose another one where we're able to answer more Q&A based on the sensitivity and the nature of the data set itself. Okay. So this is the first level of insights or analytics that you can start to drive right within the ULA platform. And it's all built right in. There's no extra cost for this. It's available to you to consume. Now, the next type of data sets, we talked about graphs and a little bit more visually appealing. We step into what we call as charts. So if you want to understand your fee book chart by category, what we mean by category are the different areas of practice that you have for yourself. So right under it matter, you have these areas of practice. So as you create matters, you have the opportunity to categorize those matters based on the actual error practice that that file belongs to. Is it a POA file, is it a small claim, criminal, family, whatever it may be. We call that category and then this gives you the ability to generate so you know that the revenue is that much. But in this insight, you do not know which category gave you your revenue. This is a slightly different representation that's similar to ebook data. Now you can do this in a bar chart. Of course, you can expand it and you can see this more up front and close. You can see almost small claims brought to you $2,300, immigrations and visa were 1000 And this was just for this quarter. Okay. And of course, you can do a pie chart visualization as well, which tells you 60% of your overall revenue this quarter came from small claims. That's an example. And the same thing applies to some other categories where you see charts. If you want to understand the category of errors to practice is great, but let's say you have a limited set of clients because of the types of practices that you focus on. And you want to understand within those clients this quarter for the top performing clients who bring you revenue. You can see, of course, you can use this tab to sort this. And you see Frederick Brown was a client brought you almost uh, $113. So of course, this data is all fake and demo, but in reality, hopefully there's more. Same thing applies. You've got the pie chart, the bar chart. 
but one of my favorite and one of the most often used is the expense chart. You've got the fee book chart, now let's do the expenses. So where did that 900 go towards? It went towards printing and stationery being the highest, expenses on client accounts, which hopefully are disbursements and hopefully are recoverable, which is pretty cool. And again, fees paid for client, again, disbursements. So you have 67% coming from an office or an office expense, and the remaining 33% comes from hopefully recoverable expenses. So these are why I call them high level, right? Now here is the fun part or the fun element or the trick of the trade. If you want to be able to compare this, if I want to compare this to a date range, so I want to understand what was my situation last year. If I compare my expense last year for the same quarter compared to this year. So this is 2020, as you could see, because I clicked on date range and I put the date range. This is 2020 and this is 2021, from January till March. You can see that we have a much larger spread of expenses. Of course, maybe due to COVID or otherwise, you have reduced gas expenses, reduced meals, reduced rent, you can see that difference. Reduce utilities. This is how you're hopefully able to have a better appreciation of how things have changed, hopefully for the better. And if they've not changed for the better, then being able to take the right remedial steps to help further your business in the right track, right? You can see this is a much larger spread. 41% came from printing and stationery, whereas it's almost 67%. So you may want to look into what happened there. And as you can clearly see, rent and other aspects of expenses that used to be a thing last year are not anymore this year. Okay, we're not beating around the bush too much. The same thing applies to your fee book. So being able to, you don't even have to change the date range, you just change the category. Because of the current situation in, we're in, again, you had a lot more of things happening around again. This is a demo data, but I'm sure you can appreciate the essence of this comparison. Okay. Now, of course, you can generate that as a report. As you've got fee book right as a report, you can do that whole monthly, quarterly thing. But then if you were to compare it side by side, you now have to generate one report for the month of this day, and then take printouts, look at side by side. And for certain types of consumptions of data, this is not the most appropriate way of doing it, right? If you wanted to generate a ledger, the auditor is not going to you know, be impressed if you just show them a little snippet that says, this is the outstanding total balance in my trust account. You know, it's not cool. They want it in a specific format. They want all those data sets that they expect to be in that document. But if this is for your own internal consumption for better business decision making, then here are some additional ways that you can visualize the same data. And we have some, again, certain things that maybe even you didn't think about asking yourself. Pro bono chart by clients. Okay, which client, if any, has taken advantage of any pro bono? And it really comes down to data, of course, right? And you can see none. Whereas let's say we compare this to last year. And you can see we're able to use historic data and give you this information in a matter of seconds.
and you could see last year, same time, we had about three different clients. And then the tablet format, you could certainly see the amount. So you, you spent an hour and a half with Mary, you spent an hour of pro bono, and maybe another with Lynn. And this data continues to evolve as the data goes in. So it's real time. So if I were to go in and let's say into this Holly Madison work, right? So let me just put in um, I'm going to say okay if I go back to that analytical item phew Thank God that worked. <laughs> I was worried for a little bit there. Um, so here, there you go. It's real time. As I enter data, the data changes as it should, and as it does with every aspect of the ULO platform. Right. So long story short, the analytics menu option is often a underlooked aspect of your business because of course everyone's trying to make money and everyone's scampering during these times, uh, but this is a quick and easy way for you to be able to take a Saturday or a Sunday or any of those days that's so not too fancy busy and really get a better appreciation for your business, starting to assess data, looking at the analytics and insights. And there's a lot more of such insights that you can ask yourself. What is the capital investment? How much drawing have we done this time period? How much of unbuilt hours do I have, if any? Right, so more of a work in progress. You could see quite a few, almost 50%. You have Danny versus Ginny, about 2.7 hours. So you can really look into that, what's happened there. If you're a growing firm, you're going to start to see this as other colleagues start to contribute to this list as well. So maybe an action to take there. Right. So this is the immediate, simple, easy, fast way for you to be able to access the analytics within the ULOP platform. Okay. Let me shift gears real quick. I'm going to see if I can show you the the mobile app version of it. So let me run through this real quick. Hopefully you could see my screen right now. And this is the mobile platform. So I just, you can download it from your Play Store, your Android Store, and it's the same credentials that you would enter on your web platform, right? So let me go into that. Oh, cross fingers. There you go, so I'm in. So you could pretty much log into your mobile app and right on the mobile app, you have pretty much the same aspects of you have clients, you have matters, or contacts, matters, 
accounts, and then time-based reports on the calendar. So I move into contacts. The new version of this, if you don't see this on your existing platform, then you may just have to uninstall and install the EULA app right away from your Play Store. And the new ones should show you this little hand right at the bottom right with the little buildings that are meant to be analytical, bar graphs. If I click that, this gives me client level or contact level insights, tip of your fingers. It tells you, and I can swipe left and right, those are the number of referral clients that have not been categorized. We don't know the referral source. It says referrals, but we don't know the source. Maybe a piece of data information for you to then help yourself. Number one source of clients source of contact is client referrals. So really you understand you've got 74 clients from client referrals. So it's either reinforcing the message that that's where you should invest your marketing dollars in. You could see that 55 clients have come from advertisement. That's the number two source of contact. Total number of clients in the firm, total number of ghost clients. Someone celebrating their birthday this month. On the 13th of February, you've got Steve Bond, whose birthday is coming up. Maybe a time to send them a birthday card. So by just clicking that little hand with the building, you're now able to give contact level analytics or client level analytics on your phone. Now, if I click on Matter, here's where it gets interesting. Now I could be clicking this little hand button right here, and this gives me insights across all my matters. This is not for a single matter. The total number of matters created, total number of active matters. Then it gets, of course, very granular. Number of closed matters, archived matters. So it's really good that you've archived those many number of matters within your firm. Okay. Of course, some of these pieces of information is too granular. Um, total number of closed matters in the last 90 days, so mostly active matters, yeah? But if I'm in a specific matter, so let's say I search up that same Holly Madison. I'm in her specific matter. And if I click the question mark, this is going to be the insight that's very specific to this matter. It tells you right away the status of this matter is that it's pending. You have dockets or disbursements and you've not yet generated invoice. You've already generated two invoices, the total invoice amount, total paid. So you know that this is a good client who's exactly paid the invoices. There's zero invoice balance. So it's been almost 95 days since the last invoice. So it's been this is very specific information or insights about this matter. And out of those $1,400, you know you got 1,200 as trust funds. Okay? And in fact, you have 522 in trust balance. So you have two sets of insights within the mobile app. One that's more generic across all matters for which you use the hand with the building the bar graph, and then you have the question mark, which is more specific to that matter, call the WSIB file. Okay? So if I do change to Hugh Jackman, oh, this is a close matter. Hmm. What the heck? We'll still go with that. It still gives you the insights. You can see that's pretty straightforward. Really will matter. All right, moving along to accounts. Same concept. So if I were to click on this hand, this gives me insights at the accounting level. Okay? So we're talking about an overall business income summary last month, four months ago. So for 
I'm sure you can appreciate this is the same number that we had with our revenue the last two quarters. This is from October 2020 till date. Of course, you've had a great last quarter and so on and so forth. So right, this is all insight around the overall accounting. But if I click on this question mark, this gives you the same capability that you had on our web platform to be able to click on this capital investment and say, all right, expense chart by category for this quarter. And you can see the visualization is slightly different. It's more modern. It's specific to the, it's native, let's call it, to the mobile platform's environment. Okay. And you can pretty much click on it. You can add more. If you wanted to know the top seven, I can give you that. Or if you just wanted the top three or five, you can choose from this slider at the bottom too. And you can put a date range. You could change dates 2020. It's just so simple. So we made data retrieval faster through analytics and insights and this new platform that we're doing with. So you can see I've got the top five. If I change it to six, I'm going to add the utilities aspect to it. And then comes the law society. So you can clearly see that. All righty. The one difference, of course, is that if you wanted to compare them side by side, then we highly recommend that you use the web platform because you can compare them side to side. It's more of point solutions or point data points that we're able to see on a mobile form factor. Okay? You can click on this little arrow. You can, of course, choose the work in progress charts by client. And I think you get the idea. So this is all data that I'm looking to retrieve. We have analytics on our web platform. We have analytics on our mobile platform. It uses the same data. And let me stop sharing. I'll re reclaim my role. And hopefully able to see my screen again. With another 10 minutes remaining, or 15, I want to draw your attention to the newest introduction of analytics in the Europe platform. And that's for all good and bad reasons hidden right here under Quick View. So if you go under document generation under Quick View, you see an analytics here. We're of course trying to make this placement of this menu option a little bit more easier. But right now, here's where it is. Now, these are the next level of set of questions that are interesting enough. But I'd like to draw attention to this very interesting analytics or insight around your compliance. So I'm sure you often ask yourself, all right, how compliant is my legal firm right now? Let's say you want to be proactive in this. This is a great analytical report that you should consider downloading and looking at right away. Because here, in a snapshot, we give you a very detailed view of your compliance. You can see the total number of clients who are not categorized. Okay, and who are they? This is a very comprehensive report. It not only tells you client level, matter level, it gives you the whole nine yards. If you wanted accounting level analytics, 
you can generate that as well. Of course, this gives you more insight. Same thing that we saw on that little mobile app, but it's all consolidated, big numbers here. So here's a quick snapshot of your expense summary. Over the last two months, two months prior, we've given you the date range this year. You can see it's the same number, 900, this quarter. And you can just print this out and give it a glance. So what was your expense between last year and this year? So last year you had $76,000 in expense. This year you only had 900. And, and quarter-wise, the top three quarters. Monthly. Gets very, very granular, but it's all important data. You can have that same aspect to it from a revenue perspective. Right? I'm sure you're pretty interested to know the divide of your revenue over the last three quarters. You saw $161,000 in revenue last year. Of course, this is not the best start for this year, but you've got $3,000, let's say. This gives you the trigger points, the trigger data sets that motivates you to make the next step. And that's the whole idea. And instead of having to go into each and every aspect of your ULAW practice and generate reports and accounts from each and every aspect, you can pretty much come in here under quick view, document generation analytics, and then just generate this. This is pretty much takes it for till the date. You can just say all analytics, and we encompass your client matter and your accounting in less than five seconds. Really, that's what it's come down to. Okay. And the random reports, the amuse me, um, of course, you've got your compliance, law society compliance at the contact level and the matter level. And then you've got these random reports that gives you maybe a bit too granular in terms of different data sets. Number two category of your client referral in the 90 days. Total clients, again. What I would highly encourage if, if you're current users of uh, ULaw, just run this report and, and again, as the word sounds, amuse yourself, learn more about the practice than what you probably otherwise thought of. That is the age of the oldest matter in the firm. So it's been about 2,500 days. That's when you first started. At least that's when Roger Moore started. Okay. Total number of closed or archived matters, fully invoiced. That's critical in the firm in the last 360 days. Just a quick snapshot of the invoice balance list by client. You can see by matter, invoice balances, how much the client owes, pending trust transfer. So you right away know that this, for this particular matter, AC867016, you have a pending trust transfer. So you've earned the money, but you've just not moved the money. You can go right away. How you take action. Enter that matter. Go into this personal injury matter. Oh, I think I clicked the wrong one.
uh, this archive itself. And if you go into that matter, you would notice there it is, pending trust transfer that amount. Okay, so you can change the status, mark this as active, make that movement, and then that's how you've taken this and acted on it. And this is the entire corporate analytics report that combines the clients, matters, and the accounting information. So once again, repeating the title for today's webinar, Analytics and Insights. And hopefully what we've been able to convey to you is that as you enter data into the ULAW system, which is being able to keep you compliant with law society guidelines, keeping you compliant with CRA's needs, giving you all the data, the practice management components of being able to manage files and matters, invoicing. So we do that day in and day out. Behind the scene, as these ten transactions occur, we're now generating the data that you need out of the system in the form of reports, both compliance related, which has its own advantages and its needs, non-compliant related, which are all of your accounting reports, and you have them right under matters too, and you have them under contact. So you have the compliance nature, non-compliance nature, data points generated in the form of reports, and then in today's session, we looked at how you can also have the other format of representing data in the form of analytics and insights into your own company's information in the form of the analytics engine on our web platform. We also looked at the mobile app platform as well. And finally, we looked at the more granular reports under QuickViews Analytics. It gives you the compliance checklist of readiness, more details into your company's data points across client matter and account. So with that, with another five minutes remaining in the webinar, I'd love to open up for any questions. Feel free to use the chat window to ask myself or the support staff join if you have any additional questions with regards to today's webinar. Once again, I repeat that today's webinar is not accredited for any CPD credits, but feel free to use our website. Um, we do have the info.ulawpractice.com. We start updating the different webinars. For example, our next webinar next week, Dispersement is Demystified, is accredited for one hour of professionalism CPD credit. So we do have a pretty elaborate calendar of webinars. Oh, there's a quick question around the Amuse Me. Okay, so where do you find the Amuse Me report? It's under a quick view, document generation, analytics, and that's where you can generate this. All right, one question I do have is, can we do all the functionalities that we do on our web platform, on the mobile platform as well? Um, that's a good question. So we're continuing to evolve the feature set of our mobile platform. And as of today, 
of course, some of the heavy lifting aspects of the business is still within our left platform, right? So for example, if you are to generate invoices, you can only still do that within the web platform, if you will. Whereas in the mobile platform, it's more of data consumption, but we're starting to add a lot of data entry. For example, in your mobile platform, you can add clients, um, you can add dockets, very important. We're trying to see why does it make the best bang for the buck to innovate. So right within the mobile platform, you can start to dock it, enter time entries, and which makes it very easy. You can do quick client intakes right from the phone. So if you are able to see that there's a, you go into your clients, so if you were to update, so if, let's say you ran the, there was a contact report and you found out there were you no know, piece of information, right in that report, you will see that, um, for example, it's called the source of contact report. Right within that same report, you can actually run this under your contacts called source of contact report. And this report tells you where are your clients coming from? You can see there are non-categorized as five. And we also tell you who those non-categorized are. So if you look at Mr. Ginny or Mr. M. Foiler, maybe at that time of client intake, you did not ask them about it, but maybe after the work is done or during the process, you can quickly search up their information and if they tell you that you came in through a, you know, a friend or a family member, you can quickly add that And when you rerun that same compliance document source of contact report, you would see that M Foiler is removed from this list. Okay. So that's how you can do that. There you go, you don't see them. All righty. If there's no extra cost to the analytics um, feature, it's built right into the ULA platform. In fact, all our features are, are pretty much built in. There's no modular addition of any pricing within the product. Uh, kind of out of context, but I'll quickly address it if we have the time. These little images that you see here, we're going to ask if those are analytics too. Uh, so these are not analytics. So typically, if I were to do a pending trust transfer, I would have to go into the matter, I would have to do all of that. But instead, I can go right into the contacts card right here on the image, quickly understand the current status of this matter. So you've got pending trust transfers, none, right? Or recently modified matters, I can click on this image. If I have to accept the payment, I don't have to even go into that matter. I can just click on payments right here and accept that payment. This is as good as getting into the matter and doing that. So that's what these cards are for. If you were any invoice spending matters, so if you wanted to quickly understand for Holly, you can generate an invoice right from here. If you notice, you don't even have to go into that matter. These images are just quick, fast ways that you can actually work, get work done right from the dashboard, which is a brand new feature set in the product. You can just skip the preview and generate the invoice right from here. Um, yes, you are able to turn off the uh, bell icon. So if you were to just click on the bell icon and it turns red. So if you leave it on, by default it's green and it starts to give you all those insights. 
But if you don't like it, sometimes it can be a bit intrusive, then you can just click on it again, it turns red, and we don't disturb you anymore. Um, the bell icon stays on the bottom right for now. <laughs> Okay. okay, if there are any more questions, I want to thank everyone for joining me today in our Edu Law webinar. Please tune in and do join us in our next webinar, which is a CPD accredited webinar at 2 p.m. on Friday. And uh, have yourself a great weekend. Thank you.